Hey everybody, Ian from Novel Music here, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at Isles. It's our latest Max for Live MIDI device. And it's a harmonic arpeggiator. It can create really interesting melodic patterns. So let's take a look at its features. What is a harmonic arpeggiator? This device, you set a root note and a root pulse, and every other note that you play, it runs at a speed related to this setting here. So the default is middle C moving at a quarter note rate. If I turn on Live's Transport, you'll hear when I play middle C, it's locked with the transport here, moving at a quarter note. I play the C above that, and it moves twice as fast. Now why is that? When we play intervals, there's a relationship between the two notes. Uh, in the case of the C, that I, middle C and the C above that, we call that an octave. But we also can express that as a ratio, two to one. And the way I'm figuring that is thinking about the frequencies. So uh, actually an easier example, let's say A220, if I play the octave above that, that's A440. So expressed as a fraction, that's two to one. So if we take that idea and express it as a rhythmic speed, then we have that C above moving twice as fast as the C below it. And we, as we tease this out and play simple intervals, you can hear these relationships. Here is C and G. And the ratio for this is three in the space of two. And here's C and F. That's four in the space of three. Now it gets interesting when we start playing uh, much more complex uh, arrangements of notes or more complex intervals, more dissonant intervals, for instance, such as the minor third. And as we add more notes, here are four notes, C, G, A flat, and E flat. And you can see the harmonic uh, relationship between those notes teases out complex uh, rhythmic profile that this device processes. So we have five sequencer lanes, gate, velocity, octave, warp, trigger, and then this uh, last choice here, all, allows us to control the loop length of each sequencer lane and the playback direction. The gate lane controls the length of each note So uh, as it's lower, the lower values uh, will have a shorter gate length and the higher values will have longer gate length, as you can hear here. But each note moves through these sequences at its own rate. That's the thing to keep in mind here. So you get these very complex um, evolving textures since they're all moving through these sequences at their own rate. Velocity. Uh, your synth or sampler needs to be configured to receive velocity for this lane to do anything, but here the lower values produce uh, quieter velocities, and as we go up, uh, they'll get louder and louder, so the effect here should be a crescendo that keeps looping over and over again. Let's actually do this playback direction as a ping pong. So we have crescendo and decrescendo. And again, if we put this through with more notes, we get this nice undulating texture. The octave lane allows us to go up or down two octaves. And same thing, it can be in its own independent length. So let's, let's set this one up like uh, so that it's sort of a falling chord. But because, as you heard, the velocity lane is still set up to go up and down, that undulating texture remains. Uh, 
the warplane changes the speed. So let's use our middle C note as an example. Here we're moving at the quarter note pulse. But if I move this up, you see that the note then accelerated and went much faster. In fact, uh, as you can see, the information about the current step that your cursor is mousing over will uh, tell you the current value of that step. So here is step 11 is at 4x, meaning four times as fast. We also can have uh, two times as fast and actually values in between, uh, which are not perfect sort of mathematical ratios. So if you want to have sort of an acceleration effect, you can do that with this. Let's try that. So this is fun for these sort of um, ratchety kind of sounds. Lastly, we have trigger which um, sets the chance that a note will fire. So actually, I'll put these all to about 50%, and you'll hear the effect. It's basically controlling the density. If you're looking for uh, a more simple way to use this, then you can just have it the bars either all the way up or all the way down, which means 100% chance or 0% chance, which also means it'll be the same every time it wraps around. Let's create a sort of uh, simple rhythm with this. So that's always going to be the same every time that it wraps around. Now let's get to into more of the settings here. Uh, these are menu panel 1 and menu panel 2. Panel 1 is what you'll use most of the time, and it's the view by default when you open the device. The quantize output section has the rate, uh, default 16th note grid, and the chance. So if I set the chance to 100% now, all of the notes, the output of the notes, I should say, will be quantized to the 16th note grid. So if you um, are not a huge fan of the chaotic sort of nature of the output of this device, this will sort of set it into a much more groove-oriented um, configuration. But this is not a binary choice. We do have, uh, you know, a lot of values in between, so it's actually nice to set this somewhere maybe in around the 90% range and then hear the different um, sort of rhythms that result from that. As you can hear, there's still some kind of uh, ratchety kind of skipping sounds when the chance is not all the way up. And lastly, in this uh, section of this panel, we have this ramp parameter, which here, I'll put this chance to 100% again. The ramp means that over the course of, in this case, five seconds, it, that's how long it'll take for the quantization to occur, meaning that for it to go to 100% chance. So it's like every node on message will set it to zero, and then it ramps up to 100. So this is a way to sort of start off with the more chaotic, rhythmically active um, texture that then snaps to the grid as it goes on. Let's let's hear that. So you can hear it about after about five seconds, it snaps to that 16th note grid. Lastly, we have the timing panel. This is both reset and loop. Reset means how many beats occur uh, before all the voices snap back to the first step of each of these lanes. So here, um, we'll actually get the clock back on here. So I've set it up to reset every four beats. So that is handy for more sort of regular um, phrasing that you may want. This also has uh, settings for 
random and bar, meaning whatever the current time signature in Ableton is set is the way that it'll snap. The loop parameter is using the gate lane as its basis for counting the number of loop completions. Let's make this a bit shorter and I'll play a single note. There, and you can see after two times it stopped. And actually if it's the direction is set to ping pong, we will do two full ping pongs before it stops. On the second menu panel, we have options for the input. So I've actually the whole time had the quantize uh, toggled on, which means no matter how I play the notes into the device, there's some internal quantization that happens, which ensures that the input is in sync or in phase with Ableton's clock. So this is how I can achieve the tightest uh, level of synchronization with Ableton's transport. We also have a latch function, which allows me to play um, notes and not have to hold down the keyboard. As soon as I play a new note on, it clears the current notes in the pool and then allows the new notes to happen. So handy for if you need your hands free to adjust some other parameters in the device uh, while, while to hear sound. The output modes, we have three of these parameters here, ratio, fold, and invert. Invert takes the relationship that we've established through the root note and root pulse and flips it upside down so that lower notes move faster and higher notes move slower. So let's do um, an example here, I'll put latch on. We have a widespread chord. You can hear the lowest notes are moving slow. As soon as I toggle invert, you can hear that that's flipped around so that the high notes are moving much slower and the low notes are moving faster. Fold reduces the sort of rhythmic complexity that the device will produce. What it does is, no matter, let's say the example of C, Again, the root note is middle C, the pulse is quarter note. If I toggle this on, any C that I play, no matter what octave, is going to move at a quarter note. Any G that I play is going to move two-thirds faster than the, the C. But it doesn't matter if it's a G above or below the root note and root pulse in this case. So if you we listen to C and G here... Now I'm going to play the C and G an octave above that. You'll see that they move at the exact same speed. Now I'll turn fold off, and they go back to their default rates. So this is useful if you're playing some widely spaced chords and you don't want uh, that level of rhythmic variety and complexity, then try uh, playing with fold to make it the result you're looking for. Ratio, this affects how the notes move against the root note and root pulse. So at 100%, it's at the relationship that we've described and explored already. At 0%, they all the notes, no matter what I play, no matter what octave, will move at a quarter note pulse. So here's an example. Here I'm playing this F minor chord, lots of different notes, but they're all moving at a quarter pulse. Now, why would you want to do that? If you want to do a sort of um, ratcheting, speeding up sound, but with chords instead of individual voices moving at their own rate, then setting ratio at zero and then setting up the warp parameter as you want will give you that effect. There we go. And lastly, we have a voices subsection here of menu two. It's basically a choice between polyphonic or monophonic, meaning if you're using something like a mono bass in Ableton, then it might be handier just to limit the output of the device to only one note. If you need to look at the version number of this device, then press the info button here. It will tell you uh, the current version and if you click on Novel Music's logo here, it'll take you to our website. And that's an overview of Isles. I really hope you'll enjoy using this device and experimenting with different rhythms that you can generate through harmonies. 
And using the five sequencer lanes, each independently set, you'll create really um, unique algorithmic music that would be hard to do otherwise. If you like videos like this, please consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks again, and I look forward to the next video.